Hello, friends. Are you tired of gambling like some goddamn loser at your bookie? Forget about your bookie. You go to my bookie. My bookie's cool. Your bookie's a loser who does it in the basement, doesn't even have a website. My bookie has a website. And my bookie takes all your bets. All right? That's where I bet on my Greek soccer stuff. Mybookie.ag. And you know what they're doing for you? If you follow the link in the description, you just use the promo code Pantelis, they're going to match your initial deposit. You're not going to get a deal like that anywhere, not with your bookie, because he's a goddamn loser and he can't afford to do that. But my bookie can. So you go to mybookie.ag, use the promo code Pantelis, and they're going to match your initial deposit, and then you can have an illustrious career of gambling. Mybookie.ag, promo code Pantelis. Get on that now. Are you tired of coloring in your coloring book with ridiculously stupid colors like sky blue and deep purple? Deep purple is a band. It's not a goddamn color. If you want real crayons, you go to offensivecrayons.com. They got the best colors, all right? We're talking about miscarriage maroon. We're talking about your parents' divorce was your fault, peach, all right? Which, by the way, I have it on good authority that your parents' divorce was your fault, all right, loser? So you go to offensivecrayons.com and use the promo code Pantelis. And you know what they're going to give you? 15% off at checkout. Nobody's giving you that deal. Right? Wherever you bought your stupid crayons, the dollar store or Walmart, they're not going to give you that. Now, if you're wondering, Pantelis, weren't offensive crayons banned from Amazon because people cried and complained? Yeah, a lot of pussies did that. But you're not a pussy. So you're going to offensivecrayons.com using the promo code Pantelis, and you're getting 15% off. These are great as gifts. They're great as learning tools for children. Teach them new, new words. All right? There's a whole political pack there right now. So teach them new things. You go to OffensiveCrayons.com, 15% off if you use promo code Pantelis. It's a win-win situation for all of us. It's time. Oh my god, it's time. Am I ruining your show? You are, all of them. Good. <laughs> Good. It's time for the Pantelis podcast. And we're all looking extra cool today, because it's Robert Sheehan Day on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, Poseidon. It's Robert Sheehan Welcome. and Poseidon on the podcast today. Robert, um... Do you think we could extend that out into a, a Montreal national holiday? It should be a thing. Robert Sheehan Day. Robert Sheehan Day on the Pantelis you know, podcast. We got enough people to sign a petition. Oh, you could. Every time you no. tweet, that, they go crazy. It could yeah. be like a giant, it could be like a giant prank. That the people of Montreal are pulling on their government. Uh, 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 yeah. the, the government's the one pulling the pranks on and us I'm, here. I'm happy, to be the, <laughs> I'm happy to be the front man of this. This is great. Face. So Robbie's back in town. Yeah, baby. Welcome Mostly back. Mostly because of you, yeah. Put, put those on. Put those on so you can hear. So you know the distance to keep. Or no, you don't want to oh, mess really? up your hair. Do you want to not mess up your hair? Is no, that why? I just don't like having things clacked onto the side. So then, then don't put them on. You'll just so, bring the mic closer uh, and you're good. Oh, a bit closer. Like, a, like this, the three yeah. finger rule. There three, you go. Three finger yeah, Put them all in. Listen, I had a very different childhood to you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but you had a very similar night. So. <laughs> there were no rules, simply guidelines. So, yeah. <laughs> don't don't, don't which, surpass which I, the three. Which, which I showed her beforehand. It was like, now these are the guidelines, what I prefer. <laughs> Poseidon's having a good... Poseidon, you can take off your shade. Well, yeah, keep them on, whatever. You look like a cartoon <laughs> cat. Keep them on. Okay. So, um, Robert came back. For many reasons, you were here for the Comic Con uh, two weeks ago, but you came to watch fucking my stand-up show. I did, yes. I and did. you I enjoyed yourself, I hope. I did. I chortled. I chortled. I could hear you laugh when Heartily. I was on stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I knew it was you. At yeah. all the sort of weird bits. Yeah, at like bits that weren't necessarily uh, sort of tee ups for. You know yeah, I mean? sometimes that you're bits like, where people gasped. You're like. So there was a gasp, and then I hear you. Oh, yeah. It's the only. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quiet. The only type of annoying laughter that a comedian can. It's from. <laughs> but it was brilliant, man. It was. Oh yeah, shit. Sorry. But you can move it around. Sorry, sorry. It was super duper brill, man. It swivels. It was. Uh, it was basically round the campfire with Pantelis. Yeah, that's what it you. felt like. Yeah. It was it's lovely. Just, yeah, it was good. I'm glad you're fucking here. I'm glad you're enjoying the city. You've been having a ball since you got here. We haven't let you rest though. You showed up in the morning and then uh, breakfast and yeah, video games, the show, and then wrestling with Poseidon, which was fun. You know, come hang with you, uh, you Muppets was was the highlight, and then also my friend Tim, who's in a band called Cubicolor, yeah, who are like there are these two Dutch dudes who, like one of them, Tim t- tells me just like. All he likes to do is sit in his houseboat, get massively baked and make beats on his on his music setup. Right. 
So they were kind of duo DJs in Holland, these two dudes. And then they brought Tim in and then they became like, you know, vocals, lyrics. Tim started insisting they do stuff with uh, with a live drum kit. So he kind of started changing stuff up and then they all made an album together and it went awesome good. So they've just done themselves like a North American tour. And Tim is like, he's like you actually, in a way. He's like you. A weirdo. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a real... A real pain in the ass. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but he just, he just, the sunshine kind of breathes out of him. Do you know mm. what I mean? He's just such a sunshine person. He's a good dude. Yeah. We're going to meet him later. Like, yeah, yeah. He, te <laughs> he texts me a slightly panicked text earlier on going, um, oh yeah, man, the flight's a bit delayed. We won't be in till about 2.33. Definitely hadn't had enough sleep. <laughs> and he has like, to perform tonight, right? Yeah, they have to go down. They have to, I don't know exactly where the, the, um, venue is i think it's open it's outdoors somewhere we'll, we'll find it yeah i mean I'll they can't hide from us in me. this city i got my ear to the streets because of poseidon over here look at him he yeah. is the streets yeah, yeah he eats off the streets he sleeps on the streets Wait, he's what? the streets that's uh what are you talking about <laughs> you've adapted beautifully he sleeps in a cardboard box across the street he is the streets <laughs> i have become the streets so you're here filming uh, in Canada again, season two of Umbrella Academy, which is a hit now. Oh. Remember when we talked when you first came on? I was like, what is Umbrella Academy? And yeah, you're I was like, like, I don't know. I don't know, but I think it'll be all right. <laughs> and then turned into one of the biggest fucking shows. It did. Isn't that crazy? It did. And uh, if I may idly boast, our boss, Steve Blackman, said to us that of all the series of television that Netflix have released, yeah. um, it was only beaten by Stranger Things season two. That was the only one that ever... And it, I don't think it got nowhere near the marketing push that Stranger Things got. Stranger Things was everywhere. In fairness, Umbrella was pretty blitzkrieg. Really? To use Nazi connotations. Yeah. Because I'll be honest, some of the Umbrella um, propaganda, if yeah. you will, <laughs> had a lot of the color scheme of the Third Reich. You know, black and white, red. <laughs> So what you're saying is so Netflix and Umbrella Netflix Academy are bringing are, back the classics. Netflix are, <laughs> I'm here to reveal on the Pantelis podcast that Netflix are pushing a subliminal Nazi yeah, that's agenda. What it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they want yeah. to reinstall the Third Reich yeah. and call it the Netflix Reich. Yeah. They knew how to make a point. <laughs> and I mean, they were snappy dressers, let's be honest. Yeah, because they had, uh, who was it? Armani, Hugo Gucci, Boss. Hugo Boss, yeah. They had yeah. uh, Hugo Boss was making the Nazi. It, that's weird when you think about history. It's something you don't talk about because someone does have to create your fashion. Someone has to create that. You would never think it would be a top um, fashion, you know, icon company. Yeah. Like Hugo Boss. It's so my, strange. My mate said, he goes, uh, was he English, Hugo yeah. Boss? I was like, yeah. Yeah, that's what the Nazis did. Yeah, they they decided instead of getting a, a suit designer from Germany, yeah. they'd like go over to England and get a lovely little Jewish fellow. Yeah. <laughs> but well, during the war. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know I, what? The Brits. I feel uncomfortable making the, these suits for you. But <laughs> the Brits were the Brits were selling rubber and other things that that Germany needed to invade other countries up to about a fortnight before they declared war on Germany. Yeah, it was I mean? a weird so time. It was, it was a weird, weird time. time, and it I'll, still is like that. You yeah. know, you have you have uh, military uh, uh, allies, you know, geopolitical allies, and then there's you know countries selling arms to the opposite side. Yeah, it's always like that. Yeah. It's happening right now. It's is happening it? with Russia, Turkey, the U.S., Poseidon, yeah. Poseidon, yeah, all his yeah. enemies, all of his fish. He enemies. finances all of his enemies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because he knows that the the hatred is the thing that fuels him. Yeah, yeah. So he he finances them. He pays the rent. He said the other day, right? He goes, we, we were, yesterday we were coming out of your apartment. We were in your elevator, mm. and it was quite a few people stopped your elevator on the way down. It was quite a long journey. Yeah, it was a very long in journey in the elevator, and <laughs> we got into the car, and uh, <laughs> but, 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 me and Poseidon were both quite sleep deprived yesterday. They, Poseidon starts up the car and he goes, you know, that, that elevator journey re really agitated me. And that's, that's really given me a boost of energy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he was just like <laughs> fizzing in this elevator. On the way here, I told six people to go fuck themselves. I'm ready. I'm ready for my day. Yeah. 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 I run on hate and aggression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you are Awful. a Nazi vehicle. <laughs> 
often overlooked uh, <laughs> creative fields. <laughs> God, the, Poseidon would make a good. I would like to see someone interpret Poseidon as a character. Oh, like to try and do him. To try as an and actor. do, yeah, that would be so interesting. I was just saying on the drive over. I was saying like I'd love to exploit you guys by playing roles a, a, a greek french canadian guy yeah but we're neither of us are friends you keep saying that but yeah. neither of us have any french canadian is yeah i know but i just mean from a outside ignorant perspective yeah, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> when we talk about quebec we call it french canada yeah, and, and we, you, you met french have... canadians yesterday they're way different than us <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like and then you are the greek community yeah. inside the french canadian community you've got so many layers of of cultural identity that you yeah. must be like it must be like a sort of a, a paranoid schizophrenic. You'd think, but it, I just, it's just, I feel Greek. I don't even feel Canadian most of the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's strange. What it's about true. you, Poseidon? You're an international it feels man, like a turtle. I feel, uh, I feel good a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> good, uh, good. <laughs> What's your yeah, name? Well, let's check. It's a good name. <laughs> let's it's check. No, no, but I do. I do. Every feel, ten minutes, we'll yeah. just check on his, <laughs> <laughs> his anatomical. I feel. I feel Greek more than Canadian. Yeah. I would yeah. say ninety-eight percent of. The and time. every Greek person hates hearing that. They're like, "Oh yeah. fuck!" He feels like he's one of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's Greeks at home screaming right now. Yeah, they're just yeah. flipping out. There's some ancestors turning in their graves. By the way, your fans have been relentless to get this done, to get this second yeah, podcast done. They can be very rabid. Yeah, they're very, very but they love you. I, I, Foaming at the mouth. I remember during Comic-Con, yeah. you were making a lot of nervous people smile. Yeah, yeah. It was sort of Comic-Con here a few weekends ago, the yeah. last time I saw you. Was, it was just sort of, it, 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 there was a lot of like uh, crying teenagers. Yeah. I didn't expect it. I didn't expect that. I didn't really think about what it was going to be like. Do you know what I mean? And then, and then there was a, it was a lot of intensity. Yeah. There was a lot of love in the room. Yeah, yeah I mean? all good. It was, it was all positive energy. Yeah, it was all positive yeah. energy. There was one, the, uh, you know, there was one or two that it got quite intense. I broke their legs in the back. I told them not to but fuck around anymore. My lovely Rose, who is my dear, dear friend and agent and uh, protector and yeah. second mother. She was beside me and she just like laser eyes if someone was like lingering or trying to, you know, massage my wrists oh. or something, which, you know, you have to let linger for a while, you know. I, well, as long as they're just massaging your wrists, I guess, yeah. you know, it's like Robert, you're supposed to be signing autographs. You're like, oh, once this handy's done, I'll, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll resume. Yeah. I just had a little touch of carpal tunnel. Just give us a second. No, no, but it was full of people. I remember it was mad, the it? amount of... You also probably pissed off a lot of people that showed up to sign autographs because every line was near empty because all the people had just made a queue waiting for you for over an hour. And that's why when I showed up and I saw you, I was laughing because I showed up and I was like, look at this motherfucker. Because <laughs> you, you're like, oh, hello, everybody. You're just having a good time. And every yeah. every other person around you, they was all empty. There was no, So they must have felt like, she's like, where the fuck is everyone? <laughs> and they just see you yelling and being goofy. You're like, oh, hello. You're like, that son of a bitch. Yeah, do you know what? Wow. I, was, I was literally taking food out of their children's mouths. Y yes. <laughs> By doing banter, with yeah. The, <laughs> that, that's with why. Fans. That's why uh, Poseidon's here to protect you from that kind of uh, th their onslaught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're trying to get their revenge. Yeah, from the night of the living nerds. So goddamn, now you're basically Canadian. You've been living here for so long now. Now you're yeah. just a Toronto resident. It's mad, man. You know, uh, like I came back about six weeks ago, and you're just like, this is like second home now. Yeah, you know. You know everything but now. But I don't have an apartment in London at the moment because when I came, when I basically made, came across the water to North America to to because I came to LA for a bit first. Yeah. Like I moved out, I moved all of my meager amount of possessions out of my place. Yeah. And put them into storage because I don't really, you know. What most, are you going to do with them? Most of my stuff that I've kind of accumulated over the years is in my parents' attic. Still. Yeah. I still have to buy an apartment and it's just been... It's just been busy, you know what well, I mean? Well, how are you going so to buy it? You're here. You've got to go take a look at it. It's Yeah. You know, look at it, argue with people, you know, stress out mortgages, all that fun oh, stuff. Oh, that's a pain in the ass. All that mm. nice shit. But it's kind of all been kind of, it's a long and te terribly tedious story. But the, the long and short of it is that it's not really second home at the moment. It's like first home. Yeah. Because 
I just I'm floating again. Well, yeah, you made friends. You know the place. It's your it's your area now. Yeah, you go back and forth between Montreal and Toronto. You're having fun. <laughs> Seems like it. It's a goddamn one hour my, flight. Yeah, it's my new commute. Yeah, <laughs> it's my weekend. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go broke, man. Yeah, seriously, these fucking flights. It's it's a bit much. Yeah. But you but got, um, did you have the day off already or we got lucky or did you tell them, all right, listen, I got to take the day off. I did. I had a little word, but I had the day off. Yeah. Nice. I did have a little word. Yeah. A little word. Then they're like, okay, fine. Like, <laughs> if you can, please. But our, I, you know, our, our production is so um, like dependent on things some days. Right. Yeah. Like there was one day I came in and we were going to do a scene that involved Lake Ontario. Right. Oh, very cool. And uh, I got a, an email from the producers the day before saying, we won't know if, if we can do this thing in the lake until between 9 a.m. and noon tomorrow, right? On the day of filming. We won't know whether we can do it or not because the city, like, re released some report about the E. coli amounts. And apparently when it rains... It like unsettles a lot of the shittiness at the bottom of the lake Jesus. and it becomes toxic to be in the lake or something. I think it's, you, you know, risk of E. coli poisoning or whatever. And so, um, so we got there and then, and then they were like, we can't do it. <laughs> I was like, all oh, right. So I just went home. <laughs> you showed like coming it. up and like, you know, you know, hair and makeup, all that. So shit what's the like alternative? Hours. Just cut the scene. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they just have to wait and do it another day. Mm. So the schedule is so volatile. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, things start to get, because, and the show is so mad ambitious that as the schedule goes on, just little bits start to get dropped here and there, little shots that we owe. And so as you go on through the series, your schedule gets kind of more and more unpredictable, necessarily. But from what I understand, spirits are high. Everyone's in a oh, good yeah. mood. It's a good team, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah. It's great. It's lovely. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. You're working with a lot of uh, the people that I met in uh, February when I came from the premiere. All nice people, the guys that you're working with. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. actors, the, yeah, it seemed like a good crew. Yeah, it's oh, a yeah, lovely crew. It's a lovely sure. crew, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were yeah good. it's lovely. Are they cl nearby? Yeah. Do you at least have close, like, your friends nearby, maybe some other actors, or is everyone in their own fucking place in Toronto, like, pretty far away? Um, who's the nearest to me this year? Probably Ellen. Oh no, Tom is nearer to me and, and uh, Justin. Um, yeah, it's kind of spread out, man. It's kind of quite spread out. I'm on the east side of the city this year. Last year I was on the west side of the city. And uh, so everybody, because our, our studio is out on the west side of the city, everybody, like everybody, the thing is everybody gets their apartments off like pictures from the internet. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And I'm, I insist on... Going viewing see. a place before you commit to like potentially commit for you know six seven months or whatever could and be a so shithole yeah it could be you know there could be some horrible terrible you know mildew growing in the walls <laughs> that isn't uh, featured in the pictures but um no so basically i i arrived quite late in may and then had to you know run around and find an apartment for the beginning of june and uh, by the time that was like, there's so much TV shooting in Toronto that the kind of the west side of the city was completely occupied. You know what I mean? With crews. Like, crews, actors, do you know what I mean? All the kind of six month lease furnished kind of thing, which is quite, you know, it's quite common. specific. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I ended, up in, the, I ended up in now. this glorious apartment though on each side of the city right it's this oh yeah you were telling me you're happy with it, it just gets yeah, really hot it is it's like a fucking furnace but you know you there's kind of ways and means around that basically you just have to go out during the day you just don't don't actually live there <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i have it but i sleep somewhere else but it's uh yeah you kind of have to acclimatize to lizard conditions but it's uh it's a beautiful flat though the guy who uh who sublet me the place he's been there for 23 years and he's like gone around the world and collected all this beautiful antique furniture and everything oh, so it's all in there old and the the ceilings are all high really really high and wood and uh everything is just kind of breathing into the like the, it's all art and do you know it's basically like it's like this room but like if you had a budget yeah <laughs> we have 14 dollars <laughs> we did this on a goddamn budget <laughs> So a lot of people don't know that even though so, you are you're acting, you're doing, you're also put on your producer hat. 
recently and you're working your hand on many things. Many things. You're yes, a man indeed. of many trades. Yeah, I'm going to start a traveling circus. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's the yeah. next one, yeah. Uh -huh. And be the kind of occasional ringmaster. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be hilarious. Yeah, people would show up. <laughs> start a traveling circus. I'm the bear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can in every sense of the word. We can ha we can handcuff you and put a little hat on you. Yeah. And make and and put a Russian dancing bear suit on you. Jesus Christ. I like how every time you're on here, you're always wearing something eccentric. Oh, you're yeah. wearing a sarong today, uh, a mesh see-through shirt. <laughs> you <laughs> I, I listen. I urge I urge all men listening and watching to give the sarong a go. <laughs> like I was in I was in Indonesia last year. I was in Bali for a bit. And it's very like all the men wear them there. And it's very masculine. You know what I mean? It's very like it's like a kilt. And then on a nice warm day you get a lovely breeze up your Poseidon testicles. Yeah. I don't know if if, if the reasoning behind it is in Bali they do it the men do it so it works because by that logic be like in Saudi Arabia <laughs> the ladies they're not allowed to drive I know, maybe yeah. they're onto something they're all about road safety <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but where where, where but is yeah, Bali actually Bali is uh, is in Indonesia which is um, Asia okay. yeah it's in it's in it's, it's in sort of East Asia East it's, Asia South it's beautiful it's a, it's a, yeah? a, a country of like over 2,000 islands make up the okay. country okay okay yeah I more know, I, I know. think Okay. And uh, you know, it's true. Interesting. It's a uh, like but thousands it's, of islands. It's really hot there, right? That's why they. Yeah, but they have. They're beautiful beaches. There's resorts. Yeah. 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 It's a lovely place, but it's really volcanic. It's do really, they erupt a lot? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. It's and I, It's hard to live there. I experienced an earthquake. I experienced a few when I was there. How scared were for you? A few weeks. Is this how it all ends? It, it was weird, actually. I was in this. I was in a little shop buying something, and. Um, I didn't I didn't feel anything until the there was a lady behind the counter and she went, Oh, oh, oh <laughs> like that, right? Started kind of whooping. And you're uh, like, it's new. You like <laughs> yeah. it? It's just, I know I, I know I'm trying the sarong, yeah, you know, yeah, see yeah. how it goes. I put it on the wrong way, I'm sorry. But I'm glad that you're impressed. Ooh, I'm popped out. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're impressed, lady. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. See, yeah. <laughs> she started kind of and then it was her reaction, and then a beat later, the the the, the ground sort of rolled like that. Oh, that's so strange. Oh, my God. It was fab, you know. It was, it was yeah, it was, it was fabulous. Really, it was really interesting, <laughs> you know, because it was only that, thankfully. Yeah. But then we left the shop, went back out onto the street, and everyone had closed all their shutters, legged it out of the town, like all the local people, everything. That was the terror of it. Because Cause you thought, why are they doing this? Yeah, yeah. Everybody was like running for the hills. It was scary. Fuck, I can't uh, Interesting. I can't yeah. live in places where there's too many earthquakes. I've yeah. been lucky. I've been going to LA a lot the past couple of years. And you have never uh, felt I've that never even felt an earthquake there. I've, I don't think they've had a particularly big one in ages. No, there's no way. I've been there a lot. I've never Well, there was recently that uh, they had a they had an earthquake recently. It was in the news and it was pretty big. Oh really? Uh, that was a that was a film with the rock. It's called <laughs> San Andreas. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I saw a news report. Yeah. Based, <laughs> based that, on a true story. That wrestler's a journalist now. I saw him yeah. jumping and there's cars on fire. Is there no end to the rock's yeah. ambition? This guy's a really good journalist. <laughs> he, he really goes after the story. Punched, he punched that earthquake in the face. Yeah. <laughs> he was elbow dropping people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really good. Just, he should be it. president. This guy's really committed. <laughs> yeah. He could really punch that presidency in yeah, the yeah. face. <laughs> well, the funniest would be if that's how we'd go one step further to more ridiculousness is if a professional wrestler like The Rock would win and then his thing would be that he would do wrestling moves on his opponents. Yeah. <laughs> like the people's elbow. Yeah, the people's elbow. <laughs> They're debating. They arm bar on people. He's <laughs> Yeah, he's the Vlad. rock bottom. <laughs> they're de they're debating, and then and then all of a Vlad, sudden he's wearing some he's got Vladimir yeah. Putin in a headlock. Yeah, yeah. You see like, CNN's like, he's killed him. He put him through a table. <laughs> through a table. <laughs> <laughs> My God, he's, a, he's got Kim Jong Un. He's about to suplex him. <laughs> <laughs> He's, a, he's like he's going mad. Yeah, he's like I'm the champ. He's a, <laughs> he has a new title that he holds. He, he doesn't wear a suit. He's always shirtless, but he has a belt. Or he's wearing a suit, but it's ripped sleeves. Yeah, like, <laughs> I think, like a cartoon character. I think wrestling school is basically like politics school for sure. Yeah, because they have to go into a public arena and argue. Do you know what I mean? Stupidly. Yeah, they have to act 
out arguments. They all have to pretend like they care. Yeah. And they have to fool people into thinking, I think this one does. None of them do. That's why, you know, you see like media trained people, Ronald Reagan and Donald Trump and them peoples. Ronald Reagan. Who have no business being in office. And they, uh, you know, they're just media trained to sort of charm their way into an office. And then I I can't wait to see the next president. Oh, I can't wait either. Kanye, The Rock, Oprah. I hope it's someone like a mascot of a team. He just doesn't (laughs) talk and it's just a big suit. Jesus. And they're like, look, this guy, he may not have a good platform, but he said nothing offensive so far. So I'm. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He might be a giant mute gerbil. He's just wacky rolling over tables. You know what? He brings, uh, I like him, he brings good karma. He's a positive guy. I like him. Do you know what? The Irish presidency has devolved into that a little bit. Everywhere. Everywhere it's the same thing. But like like joke candidates and stuff. Yeah, here too. There's a, where was it? Was it Iceland? Who? Where? What country was it recently? Oh, um, they had, they had the mayor as a the mayor or was Ukraine. a cat or a no, dog? no Ukraine. It was a comedian, a comedian one. Oh, oh yeah. and a comedian uh, like Poseidon was like, oh, the one where they had the mayor as a cat or a dog. You, you know, your parents' you, village. No, you don't know that. Uh, <laughs> there was a, there was a town that had a that elected a dog as a mayor. That's a good <laughs> idea. I forgot dogs the name. Are loyal as fuck. I forgot the name of the town dogs though. Are loyal as fuck. Wasn't it? But it's it hard for them to snip ribbons. Yeah. <laughs> How are they going to do that? Just loses interest. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like these people are idiots. It's just, yeah, smear the ribbon with bacon. But a comedian it. one. And he said that his inspiration to even run was Justin Trudeau here in Canada. Because he goes, this guy seemed like a doofus. <laughs> and he won in Canada. I think I could do it. And he fucking won. Wasn't I think che- it's the Ukrainian guy, yeah. Czech Republic, maybe? Czech, something like that, yeah. yeah. And he's a comedian one. I love I love how fact checked this show is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, we, we check all the facts. <laughs> it's just like just hey, little, look. It's little, one of those countries. It's, it's one of those countries. Just run it by Poseidon. Yeah, He'll yeah. check. <laughs> I, I I don't know why I forget the country because it's a well known country. It's not some random small. It's a European nation, but I forget about it because it's probably not a country I care about. <laughs> yeah. No. We don't get the news feed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, they don't tell us anything here. All the news is it's all this garbage about he said this offensive thing and he said that. It's never real. Do you know what I just found out? Go on. You know what I just found out? There was a comedian and went under, because uh, of all just for laugh stuff, I wasn't paying attention, went under my radar. She joked, uh, she had a special coming out for, on Comedy Central. Right. And she made a joke about a dead rapper, uh, XXX Tentacion, his name was. And XXX Tentacion. I, I had never, he knows this kind of shit. It's pronounced Xtentation. It's pronounced dyslexic. Xtentation. <laughs> He he died. He was murdered. Right. And he was a young was man, it, like was 20 it years old. Because of his name. Well, pro- people are like, I, I can't fucking say this. <laughs> so what happened was she made a joke and, and uh, they basically Comedy Central dropped the clip. They apologized. She got death threats from ex- his fans. And the joke was very good. The joke was about how she goes, uh, has anyone still mourning this kid's death? Because it was like a year ago. She goes, he's a rapper. He got murdered. He died. He was on his way to buy a car with $50,000 cash. And he was shot, murdered, and someone took the money. Right. And then... She goes, it was sad, but I thought to myself, that's a really good Venmo commercial <laughs> right there. Oh, and then God. she goes, I thought, I don't have Venmo. I should get Venmo. <laughs> like, I, uh-huh. It was a good joke. And then people took it out of context. Like People took it like uh, she wanted 20-year-old rappers to die. And on Twitter, there's all these buffoons who are like, yo, cancel Comedy Central. She wants to kill 20-year-olds. You should never joke about murders. Well, I, think, I think we need to adjust people's Ugh. expectations of comedy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like People... F- interpret all sorts of mad things from yeah. what other people say not just comedy just in general in, in general they like should they thought she's calling for violence yeah and it's not the joke's fault no it's it the joke doesn't take place in her mouth right it takes That's place it. in your head yeah it's the phenomenology of it and it's like she she was funny to some people with that and not to you that's it fuck off yeah it ends there yeah it's nothing to do t- it's just, it's so, um, people for, you know, the illusion of freedom of speech, yeah. you know, in the Western world, you know, people are so terrified of it. You know what I mean? People are so terrified of, and comedians operate in an interesting sphere there, don't they? Because of the likes of Bill Hicks and people who sort yeah. of took comedy and made it about, you know, being an incendiary rabble rouser and, you know, be wielding freedom of speech. But like... Sometimes I think people like that, they don't realize that they're imprisoning themselves. Do you know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're creating a sort of a Stasi fucking Soviet East Berlin 
society where they're building the walls can around say them. anything. Yeah. Well, here we have the problem in North America with uh, Antifa, especially in the states. So Antifa stands for anti-fascist, right? Mm. But all their tactics are fascist. It's you can't say this. They're, they're attacking journalists because the journalists don't agree with them. They're throwing milkshakes on them. They're beating up some journalists, yeah, and they're just, saying you can't say this because it doesn't fit into what I want. But that's fascist. Yeah. It Leave is. it open. Yeah. Let people yeah. discuss and yeah. then disagree. Yeah. You're being fascist. You are. Yeah. And the the we're seeing the very extreme left being. Yeah. As exactly as and that's what they're doing. They're meeting up. The extreme right, the extreme left yeah, are meeting up and absolutely. they're holding hands and they don't even see it. Totalitarian yeah. about expression, you know. If you try to inhibit anybody's expression, you know, anybody's nonviolent expression, it's like, well, you don't, you know. And that's why that's where you get these social justice warrior people who yeah. interpret violence into nonviolent expressions. Yep. And they go, no, but that is violent because it's just another tool. To oppress shit that they don't want or they don't like. And it's just, and I think it points to a deeper problem. It points to a, a sort of a, we're raising our kids wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> kind of like that when you think about it. Yeah. They don't have any emotional intelligence. No. And, you know, t t school is this weird experience where you go in and you're told to memorize a bunch of data, a bunch of very, very strange data, be it, you know, history or geography, this kind of biased view of an education and then regurgitate it at the end, you know, to pass into phase two of life. And it's just like, there's no emotional intelligence there. There's no, you know, if you were to, if you were to teach kids by continually assessing them, instead of going, you have to, you know, do Memorize. eight essays and it might be this, and blah, blah, you know, at the end. Because people then, evolve. Yeah, exactly. People <laughs> fail and then they come back and yeah. then they, they fluctuate, yeah. you know. And I think to, to like kind my of, weight. exactly, God bless you. And to, to, uh, to expect people to behave like a fucking perfect graph is so inhuman. And it's so, it's like the educative system in its ignorance has sort of contaminated us by ex, uh, uh, sort of compelling us to believe that in ourselves, we can go like that right through our adolescence. And nobody can. Right our, nobody can. Unrealistic expectations yeah. that you're setting on these Failure kids. is a profoundly helpful part of life. Huge. You know what I mean? And so we, we go into a, a sort of a strange experience in school. I really have been thinking about this a lot. And it affects how much we can cope with other people who disagree fervently with us. Do you know what I mean? Like, we can't have like, that conversation. We can't have it. We just, we're not equipped. We're not built. Yeah. I mean, I am. A hundred percent. Yeah, you even. But, but but there are many, many people out there, it seems, who aren't. And it's kind of, it's saddening because, you know, someone said to me the other day, I mean, I'm not sure if it's true, but we were kind of, we were rapping and riffing about Donald Trump and stuff. And he was like, he was like, you know, that guy gets up in the morning. He does a really controversial and offensive tweet to Democrats. And then he just gets on with his day. Yeah. He lets <laughs> them. Yeah, it's so strange. It's just, it's just. He just, he just operates with a a, a more crafty toolbox. Yes, yeah. but he is. He's so. He just. He has them uh, leaping whenever yeah. he wants. You know, he just says, "I'm going to say all this mad bullshit." And it's but then he be does his job. And racist and. Yeah. And then I mean I don't I I can't say but it just seems like he's manipulating them a hundred percent. Yeah, so because they're they're to get them out of his way. They're emotionally reactive. Yeah, right? they are. Hugely. So they're yeah. not thinking about the country, about what yeah. they're, they're thinking emotional, just like that's why I think what you said hits it right on the head. Because even those, the people that were outraged by the joke about that rapper that died, they're all, if you look at it, young kids between 15 to 30, let's say max, mm. and the rest are weirdos. And these are people that felt personally, I like this rapper. They're joking about his death. That's a personal attack on me because I like him. That's like yeah. if somebody would make fun of Led Zeppelin That's a or wild and me interpretation. And you, it's yeah. so crazy. And to yeah, to curtail someone's art because someone has made those several leaps in their frankly ignorant brain yeah. and gone, yeah, this is this is an attack. This is a personal affront. It's you're like so insane. You're like you egomaniac. No, and but they're all there's thousands there trying of people. To be funny. Thousands of people reacted to the point where Comedy Central, which now comedians were 
through with Comedy Central because yeah, yeah, yeah. Comedy Central pulled the clip, but it's and, there. And they it's, said we're not going to show it again. So you know what? Fuck you. You should have stood. You should have stood, stood by stood the by the comedian. Yeah, she didn't do no, anything wrong. She didn't do anything wrong. She didn't do anything. You made it seem like she did. <laughs> Frankie Boyle. I love one of his lines where he goes. He goes. Why is it always comedy that gets people's blood up? You don't get people like you don't get a guy in the audience of Hamlet standing up and going, yeah. "My wife sometimes feels gloomy." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true though. We were, remember the other day we were talking about this? Kevin Bacon has never gotten in trouble for playing child molesters. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's picking, nobody's like, wait a second. Hey, so there's an unusually high number of yeah. child molesters now, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, you gotta calm down, Kevin. <laughs> you know, nobody says that because like, oh, he's playing the role. Yeah. It's, no. he, it's yeah, an interpretation. Exactly. He should. But so I think a comedian, when, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, you, you saw some stuff I said yesterday. And even though you understood it from a different perspective, because you said something to me after that I was surprised people understood just the layers and just when I would open up and bring them into my world yeah, first. Very personal. Very personal. Very, to, so, like thrillingly personal. So when that would happen, you got that, right? Yeah. But you saw certain jokes where certain people laugh and others would be like, oh, uh, yeah, am yeah. I allowed to laugh? Yeah, because, because you they bring them right down to the dark gritty of the of the truth of but the stories. But they thought by stories laughing. Stories that are usually about Poseidon, yes. by the way, who's in the back smiling. Yeah. <laughs> but they thought, that. if I laugh at this, am I, contri- am I agreeing with that bad thing? But no, that's not what we're saying. We're saying together, we know it's fucked up, but we're laughing at it yeah. together. Yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. laughing with each other. Yeah, yeah exactly. The Saudi Arabia it's bit. That's therapy. All that. Yeah, it's, it's therapy. there because we know what we're talking about. You wouldn't gasp mm. if what I was saying wasn't correct. And you know, controversial comedy is to me as valuable culturally as movies, you know? And music, like, yeah. Horror movies are um, ways of experiencing feelings that we know we're all capable of mm. in a safe environment. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And that's the same thing about talking about controversial things. It's like you can you can play around with these things because we are in a certain context. We're in the context of this man is making us laugh. You know what I mean? And it's like it's part of a contextual thing. And yeah. we can all we can all heal through laughing about it together. And it's just Well you you're know. it would be the equivalent right now of your character, Klaus, let's say right now you're playing, he speaks to dead people. Mm. Somebody comes to me, why are you making fun of the dead? You know my mom's dead. What the fuck is up with that? Yeah. yeah. That would be psychotic. You would look yeah. at the person and be like, sir, you got to get like, some help. <laughs> yeah, many of you are no longer with us. Yeah, I, and I haven't, I, I never met you. I didn't take this role on to yeah. personally fuck with you. Yeah. But they take it so, I, I'm shocked with this whole rapper thing because when you see the tweets, first of all, they're heinous, the stuff they say. About what they should do to her. Yeah, she got death threats and stuff. And I look at them and they're all these, a lot of them are white kids that tweet black. (laughs) You know what I'm talking about? And they're young and they think, they're like, I'm going to defend this rapper that I'm in love. First of all, you clearly have an identity crisis. It's kind of, it's sort of toxic romantic in its own way, isn't it? It's sort of like young, what do I believe? Do I, I, you know, does my penis get titillated by a horse or a human or a bus? They're trying to find themselves. And you know what's crazy is these these little white kids in five years are going (sighs) to grow out of that phase and they're not going to care anymore about uh, XXX Tentation's death. And it's pronounced. Wait, <laughs> you, you 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 messed up the pronunciation. Yeah. Tentation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't believe you. On that. That's it has to be X X X. It is. It, it is. is. Yeah. Or yeah. else it'd be even X- weirder. Imagine. What does, what's extentation? What does that mean? Okay, look. I thought when I first read it, I thought his name was Extensions. Okay. And, and, <laughs> and then and then I was told, no, no, you have to pronounce all three X's. So his name is X X X Tentacion. But what's tentacion mean? He just made it up. That's his name. Just the uh, tentacion. I think it's supposed to sound like te- temptation. It doesn't. But it, extent is a word. <laughs> yeah. Temptation is a word. X X X tentacion. I think it's supposed to get you confused <laughs> about extension, passion. <laughs> it's supposed to and, yeah. but, you, yeah, but he was a, a young rapper. He was a child. He was confused too. Yeah. <laughs> so he, you know, so his name is uh, so good for. So I'm happy that the kid at least had a career. People liked him. Obviously, he had right. a lot of fans. It's sad so that he, he was. It's sad that he, he was, was taken away so, so young. You know, but yeah. the reason why he died wasn't because of that joke. He died a year before that joke was ever made, and he died because he didn't have Venmo. And you should all go out there and get. <laughs> <laughs> He, you know, you know what I mean. The joke didn't contribute to his death, and no, and, no, no. and the jokes being the and only thing making, I would agree it's not with. Making light of his death. No, it's not even making light. Of it. The only thing is, if it was something like, remember that guy? I'm glad he's dead. Shit like that. That's different. It's aggressive. Yeah, yeah. you can and understand. Also, people, 
It's not funny. It's not funny. So no. I can understand why people would get, but that's not what happens. I, she, I often think it's not that people can, can't take a joke. It's sometimes that people can't take a bad joke. Yes. When a joke is told badly, it's like it's t- 10 times as offensive, isn't it? Yeah, it hurts you in different ways. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah. But I've never had that reaction. I've never had that boom joke. And people will joke with me. You you see. Yeah, you, yeah. It doesn't matter. Greek, it doesn't matter. To, you have yeah. the power to bring people along, man. Yeah, you just have fun with it. People make fun of me. People, And it's all in good humor. Mm. You're all, especially comics, it, the life of a comic, when I hang out with my comedian friends, it's all crazy. It's everyone talking so much shit about each other. <laughs> but it's fun. We're busting each other's balls. Yeah. yeah. I'm never like, oh, that's too far. That's too, <laughs> like, get out. look at him. That's look a no-go no zone. Look at what I said about him on stage yesterday. Uh-huh. And he was in the room. He's just and smiling. people and, and fans people of the are podcast. Like, yeah, shaking his hand. Yeah. And, so and he's like, they're shaking his head, like, I can't believe you're Poseidon. You were and like, like yeah. you were like that dog mayor last night. Yeah, you were the dog <laughs> mayor. Yeah. yeah. I'm in charge here. <laughs> <laughs> you should get him a mayor's necklace. <laughs> the big yeah, the one that they unofficial bling. He know, gets the key to the bling. city. It's <laughs> yeah. a it's a village. It's a, <laughs> a, key, a, a key somewhere to, in Quebec. You should have a little uh, a key that to all the whorehouses. Get yeah, that, exactly. That's what it would be. Yeah, I would love a key to all the whorehouses. <laughs> uh, we know that's why he said it. <laughs> you know, you are. And what's funny is it's he, he symbolic lives. only. <laughs> yeah, they're like no, so you gotta pay. It, it doesn't <laughs> you can't actually get in it. <laughs> and he he's so lucky because he's so obsessed with like sex workers, mm. and he's lucky to live at a place here where it's common. It's part of the culture. Mm. It's commonplace. It's not like. He's not going to get arrested. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's so like, because imagine if he grew up in a place where it was illegal. Yeah. And uh, he would, he would have been, he would have been, I would have been in and out of jail. Constantly. You'd have either been in jail or have become a prostitute. Yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy though? I didn't even know, I didn't even know I loved prostitutes so much. <laughs> it's because of him I found out. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm dead serious. Is that how you it's two met? because of him. <laughs> you met him on a street corner. <laughs> Uh, finally, I've, I, I had know. the biggest <laughs> pair of tits on the scene. <laughs> I've seen him in a boob tube. It's it's quite the sight. Uh, uh, it was a. Uh, you remember how? Yeah, because he wanted uh, you wanted to get a massage. No? no, you wanted to get a massage, but you wanted an actual. I wanted a real massage. Yeah, a I didn't massage. want to get a hand job massage, right? So um, I, I, I go on. I, yeah. I can relate. And uh, sometimes uh, you can't tell. <laughs> so sometimes you can't tell. Yeah. So then I look. I go. This place looks legit, but at the same time, I feel like it's illegit. So I go, I don't want to try it because it's going to have a situation if somebody's trying to grab my dick. I'm like, what do you do? You know? So I go, Poseidon, you go try it. What's the worst that can happen? You get a hand job. <laughs> Yeah. And he went and it was definitely mine. And it was definitely when he found out when he was in there, he was like, Oh, they give hand jobs here. And then he just got obsessed. I was like, All right, well now I know. But you I were, got a blow job, not a hand job. You <laughs> were it. ruined after that. Oh yeah, yeah. I was uh Do you know what, right? I was in, <laughs> I was in a similar <laughs> scenario recently. I was in London and I was gonna go meet a mate. And I I was in the area uh about about an hour early. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get a fucking massage. It's gonna be nice, right? Yeah, so I went to this good. Thai massage parlor. Just looking for a massage and ended up, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> ended up coming out of there. <laughs> Poseidon. The, I mean, it was a happy ending. You on, came up Poseidon. On paper, but it was not happy. It was it very was, awkward. It was, it was an awkward scenario. Yeah. Because, like, the room was sweltering, right? And it was I had hot. to, yeah. And I had to, like, you know, I had to really concentrate to get myself over the edge. <laughs> and then. And then, like, she was kind of going, she was sort of whispering in a really sort of clandestine way, going, no, you. And I was like, oh, I really didn't want to do this. And she was like, oh, you need to uh, give me the cash. We should give me directly. <laughs> you, don't, you don't give it to the girl at the thing. I was like, I didn't want, I didn't. <sighs> ma'am, can you, ma'am okay. can you please get back on my back? Because <laughs> she wasn't even a masseuse. Oh, that's like, the she funniest wasn't, thing. She'd just been sort of poking at me for about five oh, minutes. And that. then she flipped me over and I was like. All right, All right, you know. Maybe. So then I went out to the ATM. It was an ATM. Right? <laughs> He's too <laughs> funny. And then I was like, got, got forty quid out. <laughs> that's, that's and then as I she and I turned around and she was there next to me oh, that's by the ATM. Weird. And I I was like, oh, here, sorry about that. Nice to me. I don't know what the fuck I was saying. And as I gave her the money, four like four men were walking up the the street and they went, way. <laughs> <laughs> as i was making the transaction it's funny because so, one time in la i thought like i was uh, this was I years worked, ago by this the was, way. yeah the, no me years ago with my buddy rob so the, uh, uh he's like before the flight he goes it'll do you good because you're gonna feel great you get a massage so we go there and this lady's giving massage and i'm like 
this place is sketch. I go, if, what if this is a fucking hand job place? You know what I mean? So I didn't know. Like, if yeah, you can't. Really... But two minutes in, I realized it wasn't when this woman was like a fucking wrestler. Oh yeah. She, I'm surprised she didn't elbow drop yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, she was punching my back. I was like, yeah, there's nothing sexy about this. <laughs> I'm in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, fucking Iron out. Hands. Oh Jesus yeah. Christ! Some of them old yeah. Thai ladies. Yeah, it was like, an old lady. Vice yeah. grips. Because I was looking around, I go. This seems like a fucking sketchy place, but I don't know. It's just the style here, you know? So I can't I can't comment, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh, I I've hope it doesn't get weird. And I, then it didn't. It got a little weird because, like, it was hurting. Like, I had to tell an old lady, yeah. you're hurting me, which is... <laughs> that was the, emasculating. Yeah, it was deeply emasculating, but at the same time, I was like, fuck, I felt good. I felt great after. I had a female friend in Los Angeles who went in and uh, was getting massage, time massage, and the, the woman said to her, and would you like uh, additional finger blasting? <laughs> <laughs> Really? Yeah. No yeah. way. And she's like, no, I don't want the additional. I want the one that I paid <laughs> yeah, for. Yeah. You said it was included. Yeah. <laughs> Finger blasting. Yeah. That is such a great word. You know, they don't. So wait, does she. They, does they're that, not prejudicial to whatever genitalia is down does, there. Does, does that mean they'll finger. Like sensually, or they'll literally fucking like probably finger a, blast. You know, probably build up from one to the other. Yeah, I, I'd yeah. Imagine. I would imagine. If I was running a time massage parlor, because when you tell me finger blasting, my, my policy. <laughs> when you tell me finger blasting, it's fucking aggressive. Five it's fingers. Too, it's, 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 it's aggressive. It's frenzied. Isn't it? <laughs> when you tell me finger blasting, I'm ready to fist. <laughs> I mean, we're going all out yeah, here. Yeah. You're gonna ball up that fist. Yeah. Uh, but it's good because you see, it keeps him. Uh, I, I never had a problem with with sex work. Never had a problem, as long as it's like a, a place where it's legal, it's healthy, this yeah. and that. Yeah. And, and then people like Poseidon don't commit big, crimes. But there's a big push to exactly. There's a big push to legitimize because those people aren't treated very well. No, not if it's illegitimate. Yeah, because you get are, they're working. Yeah, and they're why you get know, beat up if you're working? Yeah, fucking and they, let them get paid. Exactly, they get treated like shit by yeah. people, and it's because they're on the other side of the the law. And you're yeah. like, fucking grow up. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's uh, man, or no, know, I don't have a problem with adults. There's an interesting guy actually shit. you should check out called Connor Habib, who's this ultra smart guy who lives in Connor Ar Habib, Habib, which is his porn name. Right? Oh, and he, uh, I don't know what is uh, his, is, his, is his two is. favorite MMA fighters together. Is that what it is? Connor <laughs> That's amazing. Do you know what? It's because he has Irish in him and he's a bit Syrian. I ah, think it's that a bit Syrian. He's a bit, he's like half Syrian and he lives in Ireland and he's doing his. Uh, he was. I heard him speak on another podcast, on the Great Blind Boys podcast, not too long ago. Okay, about that very thing because he's worked in the sex industry a bit. And he's what's trying, the podcast called? The it's Blind Boy. Blind Boy podcast. Check yeah, that's oh, brilliant. Yeah, it's just like variety of subjects. Topics, I like that. I like everything. That. And um, yeah, so he was interviewing Connor, and he was talking about you know it just it, the litany of ways that these people um, get. Treated like second class citizens yeah. in the modern day, you know, because their work is sex. You know, they might make porn films, porn films that we all watch. We're to all together in yeah. the same room. <laughs> yeah. Which is the second half of the podcast. Yeah. It's Wait, interactive. Excuse me. Just just our reaction watching a porn. I like how he's game. like, excuse me, you should have told me. I would have only showed up for the second half. <laughs> I would have only jacked off <laughs> yeah. once before yeah. leaving, <laughs> leaving the house this morning. But they really are too, and you know, we're all we're all culpable. We're all yeah. part of the industry because we all watch the entertainment. Yeah, the, but that's what I'm I saying. Sometimes do it's it's the lack of honesty that I think fucks with people. Yeah, and there's this there's this there's this sort of uh, pedestal. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And they're beneath us somehow, yeah. societally speaking. How? Which is completely bollocks. It's, it's insane. He's uh, he's someone who's really campaigning for their rights. Go you know Connor what you do Habib. in front of the camera? The same thing I do in front of the stage. Whoring yourself out. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We're performing, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, uh, Pantelis did his one hour for Just for Laughs last night, completely nude because it was in yeah. a strip club. Because they let it, I mean, they told me we have the nude license up there. Yeah. And, then and it I meant said, he could charge more too. Yeah, and then I said, all right, I'm going to give him a good show. He I just, said, look, front row, you all went he, topless. I, I, no, no. I lent him a sarong for the gig, but he wasn't wearing any underwear underneath. Yeah. And he just, the last joke, he just... <laughs> aired like, if you out. don't like my comedy, you could suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just like, yeah. you're not laughing, bro? Why are you not laughing? Here, come suck. You, but you know what's crazy is I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with how it turned out, and I'm yeah. glad that you showed up for it. It was good. Oh, man. It, it was a joy it to was be there. Fucking, it was beautiful. I didn't expect everybody to get up and start, like, the standing ovation. They were to start yeah, clapping. Man. I was like, oh, I don't know what to do here. But there was a Billy Connolly element where there's a real organic sort of 
meandering to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's a man who sort of has everybody and is just telling stories. And, there's, you know, some of them might be off the top of his head. Some of them might be yeah. rehearsed. But you can't tell which are which. And they kind yeah. of they kind of blend seamlessly together. I'm going to tell you this because uh, I've been watching you do sets for years. Yeah. I personally, even though jokes I've heard, I really enjoyed it. It was very engaging. I felt like, oh, my God, like, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. Like, uh, I felt engaged. I felt like. You were interested. You wanted to hear more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Even though I knew the stories. Honestly, the best compliment I got, I think it was from you guys too, and the just the last guys told me the, the what I took from it is when they said I didn't see the hour, it no, just flew by. It did flow that by. to me yeah. said, okay, I did a good job. Yeah. Because you were like you were already tired. You had all this, so even for you to stay engaged for that long, and a lot of people, no, it's true because a lot of people were tired. I'd and, managed to get about an hour and a half skip before the gig, which was. No. A, God it helped, oh, it was such but a just content. hearing that, I was like, "All right." And then you, when you started analyzing it, and you saw the stuff I did to mm. bring in people into my world, I'm yeah. glad somebody noticed because sometimes yeah, the layers go unnoticed. Well, they, they, I think they get noticed internally. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But the more I think you, there's a discomfort about it, right. and it's interesting. It's really, really interesting. It's weird, more, eh? yeah. The more you push that, I think, the more intriguing it is, because. People are people feel so safe in entertainment these days. I think, and if you, like, if you basically like go down roads about him and stuff <laughs> about parts of that story that are intense yeah. and not funny, and you're like, whoa! <laughs> but that's part of it. That's what that's you know you become you become invested. In yeah. That. You know how many people that have known me for years came up to me after and they're like. Now I see you in a different light. Like they've been looking, uh, they've been seeing me as like this good little Greek boy, you know. And then they're like, "You Who must saw you as a good little Greek boy." <laughs> I don't know, bro. I'm just you're saying. a giant Greek <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but I don't know. But they they're like, "Oh, you motherfucking piece of shit!" Like <laughs> <laughs> you're a piece of garbage. I never knew. And then I got like, we didn't know you I like horse. I thought you were better than your parents. <laughs> 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 no, but like it was a, uh, it was interesting. It was yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you had a good fucking time. You <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> you know, I had to go early because uh, you guys were sleeping, and I ended up hanging out at the strip club downstairs, waiting. Yeah, for I, four hours. For four hours, yeah. you were in there. Yeah, and yeah, it was fun though. They were nice to me, and there wasn't that many. There was a lot of weirdos. I was really? telling one of the strippers. The day. I was telling one of the strippers. I go, this is the best shift you can have. And she's like, well, I like to have my nights off. She goes, she's a nice lady. She's like, I like to have my nights off so I can go out. And, you know, I know my demographic, like where to go get the money from these guys. I go, what's your demographic? She's like, it's mostly those weird middle-aged guys. And I look, really, I, go, yeah. I go, there's nine people here. They all look like rapists. Yeah. Like who, like who's um, your... Which one did she go for? Did she... Uh, the, some young guys that came in. Oh, right. Yeah. Wow. Off the street, probably tourists. Tourists, yeah. Do you know what? I was on, on Easter Sunday. I was in Toronto last year. And my friend Joe Sangre was visiting me. And it was about three o'clock in the afternoon and we went into a strip club called Zanzibar in Toronto. What a name. <laughs> That's ballsy. That's the name Zanzibar. On Easter Sunday. That sounds right? very aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> Like it, that's like a German stripper called Asreich. <laughs> <laughs> Zanzibar is actually the name of the country where Freddie, yeah, yeah. Freddie Mercury is from. Right. But anyway, we were in Zanzibar and there were no ladies in the strip club. None on the stage, none wandering around. There was a guy, there was a bartender and he was like talking to a one, one dude at the bar and that was it. And then me and Joe sort of sat down in front of the empty stage. And we were like, it's a great place. <laughs> and we, were like, we were like, uh, garçon. Me, excuse me, garçon. <laughs> this fucking guy. Hey, guy. <laughs> uh, we were like, uh, so do, do, the, do the strippers ever show up, you know? And he was like, oh, yeah, of course. I'll just go get the girls. I'll just go get a couple of the girls upstairs. And he went upstairs to the dressing room. What do you mean? They're just hiding out there? They're they were waiting. just hanging out. These are some was, lazy ass cause, strippers. Cause there was no one in there. Yeah, what are they going to do? Do you know what I mean? It was an empty house. And we came in. Uh, and, then, and then they were. he came back down. They were like, She's just, she'll be down in a minute. <laughs> right? And Jesus then, Christ. And we sat there for another like 20, 30 minutes. She never came down. <laughs> and we <laughs> just, <laughs> girls never came. <laughs> And we were just like, all right, let's get out of here. That's <laughs> fucking like... amazing. <laughs> Jesus. But me, right. yesterday, when I was waiting for the show. Happy birthday, Jesus. No, wait, that's not his birthday. That's when he got resurrected, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Which, which is a birthday. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I would yeah. celebrate like my birthday. Like, yeah. I'm back, bitches. I tried to write a one-man show recently, and a part of it was, it's about a kid who thinks he's the new Jesus. But, like, you as your audience understand why he thinks it, you know, because he's... 
kind of not very sophisticated. And he's well, like, I guess that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he, he does it because he likes someone. But I wrote this whole bit about um, what must it have been like when Jesus finally died on the cross, right? Went to heaven, presumably, and met his father for the first time in his life. His real father. Where you been, dad? Yeah. And gone, all right. <laughs> I wonder what that meeting was like. You know what I mean? What you know what I mean? In the in the minds of theologians or whatever, or, you know, they don't ever talk about, I suppose, what happened between the the time when he died and the time when he came back to life. Yeah. And uh, like my son, it's good to meet you. Good to meet me. I don't know how yeah, to ride yeah. a bike because of you, you asshole. Yeah. Where the hell were you? Like, yeah. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Cheers. And then like, and then three days later getting hurtled back down into the cave. Oh, that's uh, interesting. So he was in about. bliss, you know, he'd had his crucifixion and then, and then he got hurtled back down to the, to the mortal realm. And then he had to come out of the cave. And, There's something interesting about that. Yeah. And it's just imagine waking up in the cave after being thrown back down or, or, or being sort of, you know, beamed back down and going, Oh, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it must be weird. Think he, about it. Yeah. He must have gone, fuck, Jesus Christ. I have to fucking come out of this cave now. Like, oh, the pool party's going to be over by the yeah. time we get back. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I, I don't know the Bible too well. I'm not sure about the narrative after he left the cave. But There's not what, much. He, I think he appears to his disciples. He does. And then he's like, yo, look, some, I got holes in my hand. He does some public appearances. Yeah. And, and then stuff. I think he ascends or something like that. I don't remember. But I've often thought about when he was a kid. I've thought about imagine being a kid and they're like, yo, you're the Messiah. Like as a kid, you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I want to go play. Or you like can't a, play, bro. You got magic powers. Yeah. Like a royal. Yeah. It's strange. Or, a, or an yeah. emperor or something. Yeah. yeah. Imagine being a royal kid and going, yeah, no, you don't get to hang out with regular kids or, you know, you get to basically grow up in this opulent isolation. Oh, yeah, in the UK, that's what they have. They yeah. Got... Yeah. And like the baby, when the baby is out and they swaddle it in blankets. It's on the front of every newspaper. It's so weird. In the country, you know, little baby George is here. Yeah. And the baby is like world famous by the time he's two years old. Imagine it's, it's, it's child abuse. Yeah. Imagine it's totally spending. Child abuse. It's totally insane. Imagine if you're one of the if you're one of the kids there now or even the princes now and you're growing up and then you spend all this time with the queen and then you do some research and you're like, oh, shit, this bitch killed my mother. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, you go to France. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do you're some like, research. Fuck. You're like, Jesus Christ! I didn't. Know. <laughs> this is suspicious. You're like, this bitch killed my mother, and this asshole isn't even my father. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, you know how crazy that is. Yeah. And I'm strangely good at tennis. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, that must be what a weird. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. But it must be a weird life as a child yeah. to be told you're royal. And I still find it crazy. The UK to me, it shocks me that there's a monarchy, that yeah, they actually have some power. There's yeah, so much money, yeah. and it's a, a family. It's like fuck off at some point. Like how are you know royalty? What are you mm. talking about? Yeah, yeah. What is it? Yeah, what, there's no dragons. There's no mm. people still believe in these myths. Like yeah. You're a queen. You're you know, like essentially, nonsense. you know, North Korea is. I heard it described recently as a family-run country. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, and that's what England used to be. Yeah, it used. It was just a family who ran the country. That's and, what. They, but that's still, now they have actual power. And it was. Yeah, and that's now a they, lot yeah, of money and power. It's been you know largely disseminated a lot. But you're right. They have a lot of influence. It's stuff. crazy. Like even. Uh, um, on the on the road out to Heathrow Airport in West London, there's a motorway and it takes you past this beautiful cathedral. And there was tons and tons of scaffolding up the side of the cathedral for quite a few months. And uh, then suddenly there was a big tarp over the cathedral. So for your view, excuse me, your view from the motorway was the tarp, but they had done the tarp in the exact veneer of the cathedral. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it looked because they were like, and I was like, why is that? Tar there was scaffolding and now there's this big tarp there. And it looks like they've gone to great expense for the tarp to look exactly like the cathedral. Yeah. Huge piece of fabric, you know, that covers an entire cathedral. I was like, what is that? How did, why is that? And apparently it was because Prince Charles was driving past and was like, I love that cathedral. I love that cathedral. And it's been ruined by all this scaffolding and everything. 
we can't have that. So they built, they created a giant cathedral blanket to go over the top of the construction. It's a bit much. For, yeah. Because Prince Charles was like, it's just not as, it's, it's, uh, it's an eyesore. You know what would have been funny? If he, if he had that same type of um, rigor, you know? Yeah. And be like, there's a lot of hungry kids in England. <laughs> Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, we can't have that. Yeah, but instead, he's like, no, we can have that. We can, I just don't want to see them. Put them in the cathedral. Could you just throw? We a, have a tarp. Could you throw a tarp of a happy child yeah. over the top? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. He's walking the streets throwing tarps on people, and there you go. Uh, now you're happy. Fixed. And he's like, ladies and gentlemen, the royals uh, have fixed poverty. Yeah. <laughs> It's like in The Simpsons when they go to that new model town and there's the, <laughs> exactly. there's the video of a homeless man. He turns into a mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> oh, oh, man. That's ridiculous. That. So funny, man. Problem solved. But they do. They have really like, they have power. They That's what power. shocks me. Mm. That as human beings, we let that happen. Like, especially in the UK, when, these yeah. are educated, smart, important people. The UK is important to the world. Yeah. And to still have people bowing down and yeah. being so excited. Like, it's the royals. It's, it's some but old it's, fucking it's, lady. It's comparable to the absurdism of how loyal Americans are to guns. Almost, yeah. Because it's part of the creation myth. You know what I mean? Like, the bloodline is really, really important to the Brits. It's yeah. really important to them. Really, yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah, they're 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 fervent about it. It's absurd to but me and you line, because we're outsiders. But yeah, and it is. It's like, and a lot of English people, like my friend Rufus, who's a really good. I love comedian, that name, Rufus. Yeah, Rufus. Rufus Hound. I love that name. But he was like, uh, we were doing a play, and he was talking about the Queen. He was like, yeah, I think it's absurd that we all have to line up and do a curtsy when the lady with the golden hat comes in. It's crazy, and it's 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 absurd and demeaning, you know, but. Then the director of the play that we were doing, who's a knight, right? He's Sir Trevor. That's he was stupid. like, "Yeah, but they're what? good. For, they're good for tourism." So, you know, and they're he kind of for tourism, you know, and he kind of he came back with that, and you know, they they look people who love the you know the, the history of it. I mean, yeah. you know, in fairness, like it is fascinating to think that Queen Elizabeth II is a direct relation of Richard the Lionheart. Do you know what I mean? Like back in. I think that was 1200 and they've always uh, between that side of the family and then another side of the family, they kind of came together and they, that's what the Royals are now, you know, because there was two warring families for like ages and ages and ages. It became known as uh, the Wars of the Roses. And then eventually they married the families together and they're like, right, peace now. And so the Royal family is actually two Royal families that have been sort of spliced together. And the history of it is fascinating. Because I did a Shakespeare thing and I had to yeah. kind of do a fast track of all the English history and the monarch and all that. Like since, you know, through time immemorial of recent history. But it's creation myth stuff. Do you know what I mean? Cup of tea, civilization, monarchy. Yeah. You know, everyone has a right to a gun. It's it's ha like to, to abandon it would be to kind of there's something quintessentially English. British, yeah, yeah, British about, about yeah. the monarchy. And I think they're all scared that without them, they wouldn't have as much of an identity. Fuck, that's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, it is part of their cultural identity right now. Yeah. Big, big time, yeah. Because they still, I, I still find it fascinating that they knight people. I know. And they knight old people. You, you knight, you're not protecting anyone. Where's your sword, <laughs> stupid? Where's your goddamn sword? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I came at Trevor with a spatula. And yeah, he was, he was not ready for it. He wasn't ready for it. <laughs> hey, look, I'm not going to tell the queen this time, but you got up your game, so you're a terrible knight. If the queen is under attack, you're useless. <laughs> this Christ. is a spatula, sir. Oh, I was dear. about to toss you. Have at you, sir. I'd like to be knighted. Would you? Of course yeah. you would. Imagine Sir Poseidon. Do I don't want to imagine this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Sir Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Do they knight Canadians? Because it's part of the Commonwealth? It's part of the Commonwealth, so I think they could. Yeah, Ooh. But I don't think the, the, the queen would. She'd be like, ugh, Canadians. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, some of the people they knight, man. It's disgraceful. Yeah. Like, they knighted Nick Clegg recently. Who the fuck is Nick Clegg? He's just, you know, here's who Nick Clegg is, right? Frankie Boyle, right? Yeah. Our sh all shared love of the great yeah. Frankie Boyle had a joke about Nick Clegg. He's like, Nick Clegg, leader of the Liberal Democrats, a guy who looks like he shouts out, sorry, when he comes. <laughs> He's a politician? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. How do you a, lot a lot of the politicians get nice. That's of stupid. Of course. That's what it is. It's like the people who accumulate around the 
the, the, the halls of power, you know. And then sports people and military people. Military people, and I understand. Occasionally music people and actors. Music people and actors is dumb. But I understand military people. You should also, you know who you should knight? <laughs> you should knight? Well, I could do it right now if you want. If, yeah, he, he, he'll, he'll knight us. I'm going to start knighting people and like... Like the NFL like had a comp- competitor quite recently. You, I'm going to start knighting wasn't people. Wasn't Barack Obama knighted? You're a fucking idiot. Barack Wait, Obama's an American. No, no, but someone was knighted. I don't knighted, think so. A politician I, that people were freaking out about? Yeah, no, maybe. not Barack Obama. Sorry, that was very stupid. That was super dumb. That was very stupid. <laughs> you know who no, should no. be knighted? All the people that work at the, the ticket booths at all the uh, soccer stadiums in, in, in England because <laughs> right. they have to deal with so much shit yeah it's deal like, with less, like the sir, great unwashed yes yeah, sir or ma'am you are a knight <laughs> you are a knight yeah. now in the army of balls oh thank you my love my yeah, liege yeah, sort of, yeah that's what it'd be like <laughs> <laughs> and then the queen's getting mad yeah. why are all these goblins <laughs> yeah knighted? yeah oh the realm has become very mucky yeah <laughs> we yeah. need another play who's a knight David Bowie turned it down Good. Gangster. Jim Broadbent turned it down. Who the fuck is that? Jim Broadbent is the great actor. He's an English actor. He's in lots of stuff. You and know he turned it him. down, huh? Good. Yeah. A lot of people turn it down. A lot of uh, creatives, I think, turn it down. Because they see how stupid it is. Yeah. And also it sort of, I think it creates a barrier between you and sort of everybody else. Like I, I heard rumors. I don't know if they're true, but I'm going to talk about them anyway. Who cares? That like when you when Ben Kingsley is on a movie, I like Ben Kingsley. Yeah, he's amazing. But like his representation will send a memorandum before he arrives, going everybody has to refer to him as Sir Ben, right? And everybody goes okay, you know, and they get this this memo, you know, or email that everybody who's working with him has to call him Sir Ben. I would fuck with him so much. And then he gets I'd be like there, Benny, Benny boy. But then he Ben, get, he get, Benosaurus, <laughs> Benelicious. <laughs> yeah. Yo, hey Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, ben, yo, ben Star, come over here. <laughs> He, um, I but prefer the, the term sir. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. But he uh, doesn't. This is the thing. Then he, he arrives and he goes, "Hi Ben, lovely to meet you. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm Ben." And he introduces himself just as Ben. So everybody's what a mind a, fuck. Yeah, it just creates a fucking weird social bullshit minefield. It's like, fuck off. It's like, why does it? But in England, it's it's definitely a thing, big time. And it's funny in this day and age where you can kind of identify as whatever you want. You don't need to get knighted. Yeah. You just be like, look, I identify as a sir. And, you know, Poseidon yeah. identifies as a god of the sea. Yeah. There you go. You know? Now you have to tell people, when you walk into the room, you need them to go on their knees mm-hmm. and say, and suck all, my dick? All, no. <laughs> all hail the fish god. All hail, all hail the yeah. fish god. <laughs> all hail the fish god. <laughs> you're, the, you're Ariel's father. Was Poseidon, was he part fish? N- uh, no, but he ruled No, I'm over Ariel's the grandfather. He ruled over the seas. Oh, yeah. No, I'm Ariel's grandfather. Thank you for clearing that up. Because Triton <laughs> is my son. Is he? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's so cute. Triton is a good name. It's too. basically I had sex with a fish and Triton came out. Wow. Triton just sort of you. The you fact just, that you had you sex with a fish and anybody came. You just is, spunk. Uh, you just. <laughs> you just. You just. Just to be precise on the mythology. Spunked on some fish eggs. Oh yes, <laughs> mythology. It's called Drunken Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like a drunken seahorse. <laughs> like. Sir, you know, come on, get out of the fish market. <laughs> We're losing business because of you. This crab's not gonna fuck itself. Is it? yeah. I am the king of all of these. Yeah. I own these. I can spunk on them if I want. Look yeah. what you've done to my children. <laughs> you've murdered you've, all of them. You filleted my children. If they're your kids, why are you trying to fuck them? It's a royal thing. You don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it's incestuous. Yeah. It's monarchy. The blood. We gotta keep the bloodline going. Oh my god. God yeah. damn it. Yeah, we used to stay you stay away from the fishmongers beside me. <laughs> so speaking of fishmongers, we got a fucking big night ahead of us. We're gonna have some fun. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Yeah. Wait, yeah, what? Dude. I didn't get what it. What do you want to tell people? Because your fans are crazy. Okay. They love they? you, they, but in a good way. They're, they love they, you a lot. Yeah, they like me, and I'm definitely mentally ill. What message do you want to send to them now that they can see you on video? Oh, here's uh, to all you lovely Montrealers. You all gave me loads of stuff at the Montreal Comic Con, which I wasn't expecting. You yeah. all like brought things, gifts, you lovely, lovely flying monkeys. <laughs> I know. But um, 
I really, uh, I really love all the stuff because like people did artist depictions like digital or by yeah. hand and all this. And so I have a nice trailer this year. They've given us nicer trailers this year for all doing such nice jobs on Umbrella. Woohoo! And so I've taken all of your lovely propaganda mm -hmm. and I've just put it up all over my trailer, right? Oh, that's nice. It's lovely. It's really nice. And I put like... In those trailers, they have these vanity mirrors, you know, with the lights on yeah, down. Yeah. It's weird having a big mirror in any room, I think, because you're always kind of like seeing yourself. So yeah, I yeah. took all the fan art and like covered the mirror. And then I, I bought two rugs in Toronto and I bought this w wicked, uh, it's like a sort of a vintage throw uh, kind of blanket thing. And it's like a giant Elvis's face. On this thing so my my trailer looks bitching at that's the pretty badass i decided to like decorate it this year because sometimes they have the habit of bringing us in and then sitting us in our trailer for about seven hours before we do anything oh that's why yeah it'd be funny if the crew's like, looking at it like this guy put a lot of work in here does he have an apartment <laughs> i think he lives in the trailer yeah. <laughs> i'm just going home now guys <laughs> bye <laughs> just drive around the block yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah he parks his uh, he parks at a trailer park is, is that a hot plate rob no no <laughs> But nobody in the trailer park knows it. Like, we don't have internet. You guys are laughing, but I've seen these videos on YouTube where people buy trucks yeah. or buses and turn them into beautiful homes. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. The CIA does that and the FBI. They have huge 18-wheelers and inside it's all uh, computers and yeah. all that shit. Wow. So, the, yeah. movies, the movies weren't lying to us. No, the movies weren't lying, yeah. That's but it costs a lot of money. Really? Even even big bands have uh, some of them don't like to fly everywhere, so they do city to city and they oh, drive. Oh yeah, and it's basically eighteen wheeler because in the back it's huge. Mm. They have everything in there. It's wow. like a house. My ex girlfriend Sophia used to dance for Madonna right on oh, tour, shit. and she said that the the convoy of buses would be about seventy five buses or eighteen wheelers, right? What? Which wow. would go from location to location, and they would disassemble here. And then they would drive their 75 truck slash bus convoy to the next location. Meanwhile, another 75 convoy has set up in a location between this location and this location. So they're leapfrogging each other with a 150 vehicle convoy that's, uh, uh, that's going in, in two bits like that. Isn't that incredible? Do you know what's incredible about that? A lot of, think about this. A lot of people... All we, and myself included, there's certain concerts where you're like, come on, guys, $150 for the, the, the cheapest ticket. It's a yeah. bit much. But then when I hear this, I was like, yeah, that, I, I don't think it's justifiable, but that's why you have to pay that mm. because they, they're doing yeah. crazy shit. You too do the same. You, that's crazy shit, though. Massive, yeah. massive operation. Do you know what? That's what I love about stand-up. I met Bono years ago, right? I went into a club in Dublin with my mate Rory, and Rory had a few drinks on him, and he was a bit, <laughs> he was a bit tipsy, right? And he goes, oh... So annoying. You see these idiots like trying to be like a Bono impersonator. And I was like, that's Bono, you idiot. <laughs> Just relax. He thought it was an impersonator? <laughs> yeah, he was like, uh, oh, <laughs> right. Hey, man with the sunglasses inside, yeah, come yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Settle this debate. <laughs> you're a loser, sir. Are you're you a Bono? loser. <laughs> Are you Bono? No, you're a loser. Are you Bono or a loser? <laughs> Yeah. I guess I'm both at this point. Yeah, he I'm... just assumed the latter. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I was brought over to meet Bono. Bono goes, oh, we all loved, I did this Irish TV show about gangster drug dealers bringing like large amounts of drugs into Dublin called Love Hate. And Bono goes, oh man, we all loved the show. We all watched it on the tour bus. I was like, yes. Goddamn right. I was like, that's pretty showbiz. And Bono has the edge, right? That's the guitarist? Bonio, yeah, Bonio, Bono and the edge. That's and... Awesome. Adam Clayton, who decided that he didn't need a, a jazzy moniker. Isn't that hilarious? But come watch Bono, The Edge. I'm Adam. <laughs> Adam Clayton. Yeah. <laughs> and Larry Mullen Jr. God damn it, Adam. We told you to come with a cool name. <laughs> I, I said I wanted to be the Killer Bees, and you didn't let me. Like, <laughs> fuck, just stop talking. Stop. <laughs> he's the autistic one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's oh. the doofus at the back. All right, so we're going to get the hell out of here in a minute. Um... Oh, yeah. And also, fans, sarongs. Tr seriously, just try the sarong. Give he's it a go. serious about the goddamn sarong, and you'd think he's messing, but he's not because he's actually wearing one. He commits to I the wear bit. It, I wear it all the time. It's so comfortable. You get away with a lot, though. Yeah, because you give yourself the permission. Yeah, that's what I learned, yeah. You know, that's all you have to do. Just but go, I'll tell you I one like thing. that, I'm doing that. I'll tell you one thing, because I'm a big guy. Yeah. 
the sarong looks better on you. <laughs> you have the David Beckham physique. It makes more sense. Yeah. A big guy like me, they're like, oh, just put a diaper on, fatty. <laughs> like, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah, what you the look, fuck are you doing? You look like you're wearing like a schmuck. Yeah, it just, it'll look weird. What yeah. about a toga? Ooh, Greek, even a toga, it's going to be like, are you sumo wrestling, sir? Like, what are you doing? Just wrap that around your balls. And I'd like me. to see you in a toga. Like, you got that right, you would. <laughs> I'd like to see you in a toga as well. Yeah. That's your ancestors. Yeah. Togas you look were... nice and they're comfortable. Yeah. But yeah, you, yeah. you can't wear them all the time. You Like, when are you going to... Like, in the modern day, you're going to wear a toga for Halloween or an orgy. When else are you going to put on? <laughs> <laughs> when else are you going to need a toga? That's true. What were they for? Why Why did togas exist? Well, because it was hot in Greece, right? So it was just yeah. clothes. But it was just... A you're, way co of... you're covered up and it's kind of loose. Kind of like you right now. Yeah. Right? And yeah, they were yeah. white because uh, the sunlight wouldn't burn. Yeah, yeah. So oh, it was yeah. just because they were. That's, it w that's what I loved about Athens. I went there a couple of years ago, and the whole city is white. Oh, it's, it's gleaming beautiful. white. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Yeah, to that's why the Germans were always trying to take it over. Really, like, this is our kind of place. White, They're like yes, yeah. <laughs> it'll be great. It'll be where the yes. Scandinavians will live. Yeah, exactly. And then they're like, "What do you mean you have the Jews here?" <laughs> Wait, and they got very angry with us. Wait, so you are going to take the Scandinavians, the tall, blonde, blue-eyed ones, and put them in essence? You're like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. You, you know what's funny? Because uh, what we were talking about, because we have our own ideas about uh, <laughs> the thing that we're writing. Yeah, yeah I find it so. Wacky! I love making fun of that that time period yeah, and those yeah, things. Yeah. The Brits love that too. The Brits are always. You, you know why? Because you should. Because you know how people are like. Oh, I can't make jokes about Nazis. That yeah, they're hateable. We should be making fun of them. If there's anyone that we're gonna ridicule, yeah, yeah, yeah. it should be Hitler. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Let's fuck with it. Like you really care about Hitler's feelings? Come on. <laughs> like come on, don't be that person. He's somewhere in Argentina. He, he's no, he's probably dead now, but he, I yeah. guarantee you he was in Argentina. Yeah. He's, he definitely got away. He's Yeah, he's, he's do, dancing the bolero yeah. in Argentina. It's funny that... Well, the, Joseph Mengler, who was uh, known as the... Um, Mengler? The... What was he? Nazi the, scientist? The, yeah, the Dark Angel. Wasn't he the something angel? Yeah, they all had the weird names. For something angel. But he was a horrible, horrible, monstrous human being yeah. who was fascinated with identical twins and would regularly do awful invasive experiments on live unmedicated jewish identical twins that's crazy he, he stitched them together he'd like hold one that he'd, he'd strap one down and then do awful things to the other one to see if the other one was getting the same reaction that is so stupid like he would he would he would like put jewish people in um uh ice cold baths and then turn the cold down and down and down and down to see what temperature it took minimally cooling to kill to freeze them to death in water you know so they would do all these tests it was just so profoundly yeah. horrendous and awful yeah so don't tell me not to make fun of them and mengler uh died um off the coast of uh, brazil or costa oh, rica god he had a good at life. like 88 he's he swimming in the sea that's yeah, how crazy he died. that is yeah it's pretty dark they got away with a lot of shit that's why now for me they're they're not off limits Fuck, you did too much to be off limits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Why, well, yeah. you know, yeah. should be ridiculing. Right? That's why I like the Brits. The Brits have a dark humor too. It's funny though, you know, like, I recently learned about the Brits, the British educative system and historically what they tell British people, how they design British people coming up, you know, in terms of what they know about their own history. And, yeah. you know, I can't speak for all British people, but a lot of them will aren't going to be history buffs. So what they know about history is what they've learned in school, a lot of them. And uh, they don't know, they don't learn anything about Ireland, about the really? 900 years of persecution, about the, a lot of the, the darkness of the British Empire is omitted from the education of future English people, right? And Scottish and Welsh people and so on. And in, the, in Ireland, you learn about how, you know, the Brits were pretty damn awful to yeah. the Irish. It essentially made so it that must be weird. illegal to be Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and am Irish. Weird. What? And they're like, hello. Who the fuck are they? They're like, hey, hey, nice to meet you. But there's no sense of, but the Germans, <laughs> the Germans do the opposite. The Germans teach the kids exactly what happened in World War II. And they're like, this is how we're going to make it work in World War Three. This is where we <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Don't no, make the same mistake let's twice. Let's go at it proactively. Yeah. yeah. But, no, they learn it so that they don't, so that they know the dark. Which is a healthier way I to think be. So. I mean, yeah. a friend of mine, Leo, she, she's German and she sometimes, she see, she, she travels a lot and she meets people who, um, 
are a bit tentative about talking about it and stuff. And she's like, no, let's talk about it. I'm the most educated about it. So let's chat because it's, it's, it's de mystified yeah. or whatever in, uh, and, yeah. you know, and, and that's why history repeats itself. That's my theory that big, we empires, don't learn. no big muscular empires that, that are imperial and they expand and they take resources from other civilizations. They don't teach their people their own wrongs because there's a great arrogance to them. And so they just, the same people do it again and time and time again throughout history, you know? So I have big respect for the Germans and from a historical perspective, in fairness, for teaching their people about the worst sin that they committed in history. Interesting. You know, it's, it's an interesting debate. Yeah. And I think the Brits should start to, um, they should, uh, I'm not a, uh, an education practitioner, but my humble opinion is that the Brits should start to teach British people about the terrible sins they committed as well. And the Belgians and the Spanish and the Portuguese, because we have to, we don't know, like most people on earth have no sense of the continuation yeah. of the human experiment. Do you know what I mean? How it all began, where do we fit in it? You know what I mean? And so the more you know about history, the more enriched you are, the more the world means to you. Do you know what I mean? And it's a shame. Canada that, has to apologize at some point for yeah. pineapple pizza because that is an atrocity. <laughs> <laughs> that is, That's Hawaiian, surely. Yeah. No, no, it was a Greek guy in, in, uh, Vancouver. in Vancouver. Well, yeah. listen, he's been excommunicated. I thought you were going to say executed. Uh, <laughs> he's actually. dead now, too. He was an old man. He's, he died. Well. But the Greeks don't consider him Greek anymore because he did that to pizza. <laughs> so, like, you can't rape a good food. I don't know how that became so popular. I mean, the people are partly to blame, surely. Surely, yeah. People like uh, salty sweet, apparently. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that either. And I don't Poseidon like the mixture. Loves that. Oh, yeah. A future episode of, um, of uh, your other podcast, you're going to do the degenerate breakfast, right? Oh. <laughs> Wait, because uh, we were when we were eating breakfast, uh, I go to my breakfast is more of a degenerate breakfast. And I was like, that's a good name. Uh, yeah, and he, he took me sure. through a tour of his breakfast. Yeah. Oh, God. And I mean, it flip-flopped <laughs> from the extremely sweet to the very, very salty bacon. Yeah, yeah. And, and a and, penis. And back again. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, some, some small baby animal penises. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, wow, this is really degenerate. Specifically cow penises. Sure, is that meth? <laughs> yeah, don't judge me. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little digestif. So Poseidon, uh, if you want to follow his antics, on Twitter, the Poseidon 69 is his Twitter handle. Of course it is, you fucking perv. Robert Sheehan. We already know your Twitter handle, uh, and it's down there in the description. Um, Robert's show, Umbrella Academy Season 2, is in filming right now, so you can watch Season 1 and recap. Get a nice little recap. Get a little get, recap. Do you know, familiar. I, I did that before my first day. Because Just to be, it, yeah. Like, was, what happened? Yeah, you forget. Because yeah, I was about. it had been about a year, and I was like... How do I how do I do this character? Like, yeah, you, you got to remember, just, just, yeah, just the same. And I was like, fuck, I, I should probably watch this. And then what happened? You got right back in. You're like, oh yeah, I, I feel did. you, Klaus. And I also I also saw a lot of ways that I want to make it different. You know ah, I, mean? I like those. I, like, I like you said I was that, like, yeah. you know, there's a certain energy that I want to try and flip on its head. And I, whether or not I've kind of brought that, I'm remain not too to sure seen. if I have. But, um, you know, I have in my brain, so. We'll see what that's done. When does it start airing, season two? I don't know. March, May, I maybe next year? It's completely at the behest of Netflix, who, as we said earlier in the podcast, are pushing a subliminal Third Reich agenda. Yeah. I think that's... Uh, you know what I like about them? That's I, fair to say. They, they could take a joke. <laughs> that's true. You know, that X in Netflix is starting to look a lot like a X, 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 actually. Yeah, could you imagine? It's like, God damn it. No, but Look, I like them because they no, could take a joke. No, this Netflix, that we're joking. We're not serious. No, no. They, they, the good thing is they have that whole Netflix a joke thing where they put the specials on. And yeah, they say they a lot make of, fun of Yeah, Netflix. they fuck around. So what I like is that they could take jokes. Yeah. But you could have made the same joke about mm. another company. Yeah. And they would have lost their mind. They might attack What do you, you mean Best Buy? Like, we're good people. What do you, what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean Cadbury's endorses international terrorism? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? I, what? Just so you guys know, I think since we're saying it, we should yeah. mention it. Um, what do you think? What Tim do you mean? Hortons has been lobbying for years to bring back slavery. And <laughs> it, it's true. I speak to the employees on yeah, a daily it's basis. Very, really. Yeah, it's very weird that they've been lobbying the government. Yeah, yeah. Like, come on, the good old days. Come on. They're like when we, you know, we hired people, but we didn't pay them. Yeah. It was better that way. They pay them in muffins and yeah, donuts. Yeah, and the government's like, I don't know if that's going to work for the they economy. Trust us, it'll work. <laughs> they have a life expectancy of like 27. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why they're they all retarded? Eat all that <laughs> shit. Yeah. 
So thank you for yeah, watching. So it's been a goddamn pleasure. It's and you follow the boys here. You follow the boys. You watch their stuff. Um, his fucking shows are doing great. He's ending it with a dance. Oh, what the hell? Jesus yeah. Christ. Face touch. I just want to touch um, the mustache. His mustache. How weird is that? That I stash? don't approve of. I Nobody approves of it. No. No. I, no. I love your mate Homer last night. No. He just, he just <laughs> leaned over and he was like, Poseidon, I don't like your mustache. <laughs> Shave it. <laughs> Shave it. <laughs> I love that. It's like, it's like God Homer. bless the Greeks. You know, they're very honest. It's yeah, yeah very direct. <laughs> Now that you touch my mustache, though, you probably won't get laid for the next three months. That's not true. <laughs> Trust me, it's not true. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> nothing stops him. I no, am was, celibate. He, How dare you? Oh Jesus! <laughs> yeah, for the last forty-seven minutes, baby. <laughs> How long has this podcast been going? That's it. Yeah. Uh, it's not true. It's not true. He's a he's a, he's a quiet young man. Yeah, he's a good boy. Thank you guys for listening.